and I'm, I'm really uh, honorable to present the next speaker, is David, uh, the president of the Liberal Land. Uh, may you ask for your claps, please? Thank you very much. And it's a great event that our representative office in, in Ukraine has put together. Are collecting the support uh, through involuntary means. That's not the case with Liberland. Uh, we actually founded Liberland to prove the fact that we can organize even a state on a completely voluntary basis. Uh, that uh, the, the, the taxes in a state can be voluntary. And that idea is not that new. I mean, the Articles of Confederation of the United States have actually proposed voluntary taxes on a federal level in the United States. It didn't last too long. But the, the idea of voluntary taxes, even though it sounds like oxymoron, has been out there for quite some time. And I believe now, when we know what it takes to run a society, to run a minarchist society, and it is probably, probably 2 to 5% of GDP that is needed to run some basic services, like system of courts and, and security, that we can actually prove it. And the uh, only thing we need it to make it happen, uh, to basically have all the elements of statehood was a territory. And uh, it's roughly four and a half years uh, since we founded this beautiful piece of land between Croatia and Serbia, uh, which is now called Liberland. You can actually find it on open source maps. Uh, I was flying the other day and uh, there was on the, on the panel on, and on the flight, which was, sh which was showing where are we flying. There was Serbia, Croatia, Hungary, and, and there was Liberland in between. So Liberland has gotten onto the even official flight maps, uh, as probably through open source maps, which recognize Liberland now as a country. You can also find it on Google Maps. And if, of course, it's a still big challenge. I'll be talking about it in a, uh, in a second. Uh, the idea behind Liberland was to try to combine the best elements of governance systems that we find so far. A republic, a system in which the government is limited to basically take care of some elements. And with our case, we really want to take care of security, justice, and diplomacy and nothing a part of that to reduce the state uh, to an absolute minimum. But we want to go even further. We want to look into how to introduce more um, competition into justice system, how to introduce more competition into taking care of security. The, the, the centralization uh, in competition in diplomacy is a bit difficult. I think that's one of the things that the state has to do is kind of a centralized diplomacy. But I'm trying my best to make as free uh, the representative offices around the world uh, as, as possible so they can organize events like this. And this is a, a living proof that such a concept is actually working as well. And I hope uh, to be able to provide through the existing governance system more support uh, for these events in the future. Democracy, because there is a one nice element about democracy which is working in Switzerland. The majority of citizens usually does a good job in vetoing the decisions by the government. And the more barriers you have for implementing a new law, the better. Uh, so in, in Liberland, basically all the citizens will have the veto power uh, to get rid of the decision that will be implemented by government. And the government will be formed through meritocracy. So easy idea. The more taxes you pay, the bigger is your vote in the society in which you are living. With these votes, you will be able to vote members of Congress very likely 20 members of Liberal and Congress. And we have selected one of the best technology out there that is available for blockchain governance. We are using now EOSIO. It's in the form of testnet. I'm very happy that I met some partner companies here in Ukraine because, of course, this is a hub for blockchain development that have pledged to help with the, uh, with the programming of the Liberal and court system on top of this system. So we're building now all this all these technologies in one pack. You will have the cadastre map, you will have the registry of cars, of companies, uh, and the court system in one pack with the voting mechanism, everything on one single blockchain, which I think is a pretty interesting concept, uh, which has not, of course, been implemented by any existing country so far, but uh, all these new startup governance systems are very uh, inspirational for, for the governance of Liberland and I hope that the system we have, which we have chosen will be at least for a couple of years, let's say, one of the best uh, in the market.
And uh, the good thing about EOS IO technology is that it can upgrade itself. So the protocol of governance can improve over the time. And yes, all of this will be basically open source. So any other government can copy paste it and use it for their own needs, which I think might also add a, a, a nice value for the, uh, for the, let's say, startup nations around the world that would like to copy what we are doing. There is a nice book written about that by, uh, actually it's published by Liberland Press, you can find it on Amazon, it's called Open Source Government. So, I'm just wondering, does anybody here try or start thinking about starting a new country or a new nation? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, great. Uh, yeah, well, it's a, it's a challenge. What do you need for it? Uh, you need to have a population. According to Montevideo criteria, you need to have defined territory, you need to have a government and the capacity to enter into relation with other states. And I will go step by step on how we are fulfilling these criteria. But if you would like to read some nice, um, very professionally written neutral text about it, there is this 38-page article from Chicago Journal of International Law about Liberland and how does it fulfill it. It's two years old, but it's still very much in-depth uh, study on, on exactly what we are doing. Uh, we have population, uh, no doubt about it. There is almost 600,000 people now that, that signed for citizenship. Uh, when I was thinking at the beginning how many people we could attract as citizens. We are thinking that by the end of the first year we could have 20,000. And those 20,000 people have showed up in the first couple of hours. It was a pretty exciting time and luckily enough we had good infrastructure so we had 200,000 people basically that applied in the first three days. Uh, that, that tells you something, that the idea of course is popular, that there is a great demand for new countries and, and there is a, probably the best way how to inflict change is by competing with existing states. Uh, right now we have some, let's say 218,000 of people that we believe have properly filled the forms. They are not communists, they haven't, um, they respect private property, they are not coming from a terrorist background and uh, they have submitted all the paperwork that is necessary for it. And we've got also 120,000 people that indicated they want to start business and I think it's huge. You can see that this is literally like a startup business nation at the same time and I think there is a huge unexplored potential in that yet, which we have a, a, an obligation uh, to discover. We have started very recently the e-residency program, so it will be much easier for liberal lenders uh, to start companies, uh, to make shares, uh, to interact with other liberal lenders, yet have some degree of certainty that they are not dealing with crooks. Uh, so basically you apply for e-residency, it takes, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes to fulfill the forms and you get your e-residency card and that, that will in turn give you access to all these platforms that are being built on top of our system. We have territory, it is very well defined, it's actually defined to degree of 10 centimeters uh, for to make, just to make sure we don't have any territorial dispute with either Croatia or Serbia. We have given both countries half meter uh, so that we don't infringe on their borders, but of course it's a big challenge. Despite the fact that Croatia doesn't claim this territory and they are basically saying it's Serbia and Serbia already stated that they don't mind creation of Liberland, we are challenged. And uh, as you heard about the seasteading project in Thailand a little bit earlier, uh, that, uh, that, that small house over there became a threat to territorial uh, and sovereignty of Thailand. Uh, Liberland has also become one of the biggest threats to Croatia according to the Ministry of Interior in Croatia. So now we are a challenge for them. Uh, but I don't think so. I really believe we are one of the biggest opportunities for them in the near future. And Liberland could, according to our economic studies, rise the GDP of Croatia and Serbia by 1% a year. So I think we could bring enormous economic benefit. And that again is an independent study done by Alibek, which is a, a economic uh, economic study for 28 pages. You can see a lot of nice development plans of how Liberland could be developed. This is one of those plans to turn it into a nice golf course uh, with some futuristic buildings in the middle and keep as much nature as possible, uh, done by a US slash Chinese architectural studio. Uh, 
I really kind of like that that uh, project, but what we said and what was actually at the very beginning that uh, the liberal end as a country will not define, uh, will not push investors to do something particular. We are really into free market urban planning. And this architectural competition was actually organized by the CEO of one of the most famous architectural studios, uh, Patrick Schumacher, uh, who is the CEO of Zaha Hadid. And uh, he is also one of those experts on free market urban planning. Uh, so I think he's a great person to help us to define, let's say, some parameters within Liberland could be developed in future. This is actually the latest project, and I would like to show you a small video. Uh, it has, this was updated at the beginning of this year by Italian architectural studio, a proposal for first building that could be in Liberland. Uh, I quite like it. It also would not basically infringe the nature in Liberland and would keep, would keep, uh, would make something magnificent there. And this is the government, actually. Uh, let's, so let me introduce you, the guys, one by one. And this is our Minister of Finance, Jan Purkrabek, uh, who is a great financial expert. Thomas Wolf, former US diplomat, uh, with a great experience and skills. He was there when the Daytona agreements were formed. Uh, Boguslav Wozniak, the Vice President. This is the chief uh, behind everything. That's my wife. Uh, this is Mike Kostas, our advisor for blockchain technologies and also active representative for Romania. Daniel Dabek, who is our representative in Serbia and he's doing a great job in promoting Liberland there. And this guy is the third most popular politician in Croatia. His name is Ivan Pernar. He is a, an extraordinary person who at the time I think gathers almost 20% of popular support. So the, the strongest single political entity that supports openly Liberland, a part of, of course, some governments that I cannot really talk about, but political entity comes from Croatia. And I think it's a great coincidence that, uh, that Ivan Pernar is doing such a great job and he's in, in, in the neighboring country. You see, he also holds Liberland diplomatic passport and high state award. Uh, so it's, it's great to have him on board. And we have this plan now to develop our blockchain, and I think it, it is inevitable that we put together a nice system of, on, of governments, of governance for Liberland, so we become recognizable also for our achievements in terms of organizing society. You can see that a lot of things were already done. The blockchain explorer, the, the coin was already, the testnet was launched, the APIs, and monitoring and statistics. Now we are in this phase when the land uh, when the voting platform is being built, uh, the key recovery system is being built, uh, and uh, the, the last phrase actually contains all the registries that you can think of, from budgeting system to car registry, to domain registry, to leasing platform, uh, anything that, that you can think could also be inside of our jurisdiction run by Liberland as a, tra a kind of a traditional state uh, providing these services. We have a, a great number of representative offices. I believe it's right now 110 around the world. So I'm, I would say we are in all countries, for example, in Europe, in 80% in of countries in Africa, in some 50% countries in Asia, in Central America and, and South America. We are probably in, in half of countries already. And we are expanding every day. Uh, okay, every week we usually add one office, a new, new one to the to our system. Right now, if you go to our website, you will only see 33 because we just launched a new website and changed uh, the, the ways that ambassadors can work with the data. Uh, but soon there will be all these 110 offices. The red dots are very interesting projects. Those are liberal and diaspora villages. Those are places which. Uh, are developing uh, basically villages that are under Liberland flag. They are not, of course, under Liberland jurisdiction directly. They are usually filled with Liberland. There is uh, there is beautiful village in Panama that is being developed as we speak. There is Liberstadt in Norway. If you heard about the project which was created shortly after Liberland was created, uh, so wherever you can think, there is something going on. I hope there will be some project in Ukraine soon. We've got one of those representatives of this kind of startup community or village here with us. Uh, so if you're interested, I will connect you with him. And I think it's going to be a very nice development project, which is very well funded. Uh, so we can, we can talk about it later. These representative offices also sometimes have a physical space. 
Uh, by the way, we don't have a physical space here in Ukraine yet, so if you, were, if you knew about some space which would love to share the idea uh, here in Ukraine, it would be great to talk about that. This is our representative office in Brussels. It's a nice 17th century mansion. Uh, I actually flew directly from there because there was a nice blockchain event that was organized by our representatives to yesterday. Uh, it, it is always great pleasure. There are different members of European Parliament, people from the European Commission that usually attend these events. And I think Brussels is a very important diplomatic hub for us to make a change. This is our representative office in Belgrade. Uh, it is a, a, a micro co-working space as well, and also a first dinar to Bitcoin exchange in Serbia. Uh, so it is very, uh, very business active, and I don't mind that. I'm actually quite happy if those representative offices are making some real business happening. Uh, and we are working on all levels. Uh, this is a big event that was organized in European Parliament with the support uh, actually of almost all groups. It was organized by EFDD uh, mainly, but, but we had members of European Parliament from all groups a part of the extreme left. That was very nice to see that even Greens have sent one member of, of their party to look at what Liberland is doing and actually support it actively. We had also a big event in US Congress. We are building this uh, freedom, liberty, caucus for Liberland inside of the, inside of the US Congress. And uh, it is amazing how much support can we gather in such a political body. And we have already made some visible progress in terms of diplomacy. We have signed the collaboration agreement with Somaliland. Uh, by the way, does anybody know here knows where Somaliland is? Not too many, two, three, four, five, six. Somaliland is a de facto country now for 26 years. They have been fully independent, fully functional country, much more prosperous than Somalia, yet the world refuses it to recognize it. It's bigger than UK, there are five million people living there, uh, yet they don't have the full uh, country status. And I was thinking that it would be great actually to collaborate them and go hand in hand and fight for recognition because their cause is just really delayed in in terms of recognition, and uh, and we were thinking we are having the things that they don't have with the PR. I think there is a little bit more people actually globally now that know about Liberland than know about Somaliland, which is a bit uh, awkward, right? But that's the way it is. But Somaliland has enormous natural resources uh, that can be turned into great business. They are also very open about free, of supporting free market is directly in their constitution. So we flew there, we signed the collaboration agreement and now there are multiple projects that are, uh, that are in the process of developing and I hope that this diplomatic connection will, will stay there. This is Somaliland, this is, this is actually Somalia. Uh, this is Ethiopia, if you didn't know where, where we are. But uh, I like this quote, uh, you can be a real country unless you have a beer and an airline. It helps if you have some kind of football team or some nuclear weapons, but at the very least, you need to have a beer. And the first brewery of Liberland was actually Liber... Okay, where is it? Disappeared. Oh, it disappeared. You don't see the beer. But uh, the first... Uh, beer of Liberland was Liber Ale that bankrupted because it was a private venture. Now, uh, the, the new, new Liberland beer is actually quite popular and is expanding around the world. It has become the second most popular beer in Serbia uh, on one of these latest competitions. So they are doing quite well. They are being brewed also in Serbia now for some time. Uh, it's one of those, and I have zero share in that, and the state has zero share in it as well. So it's a complete private venture. Um, which is being built on top of, of Liberland. We have an airline, uh, it's called Liber Air, Liberland Air, uh, Air Liberland actually. It is uh, also private venture by Liberland plane owners, can sign kind of free association. But now we also are getting an airport. As we speak, uh, the deal has been sealed uh, about an airport which is only eight kilometers away from Liberland, so people could be able to fly directly to the territory without the hassle of, of driving for two or three hours from the nearest international airport. So that is happening as well. Uh, we also have a, a great success in terms of uh, Miss Liberland. Now I think it was four or five competitions where some lady was representing Liberland. This is our biggest success where uh, our, our lady became second 
uh, during this competition where there was 54 other countries present. So it was a great success for liberal and diplomacy uh, with the beauty contest. And it's quite easy to start a company in Liberal Land. It takes a couple of minutes to sign up for it right now. Uh, and, uh, and you get an entity, regular entity, like anywhere else. But the upgrades that is being done now as we speak is that the fact that you will also get a decentralized autonomous organization. So we will have all the, all the shares on top of blockchain and you will have your decision-making platform in the same place. We are working together with Corporatio, who is already doing this for two or three other countries successfully so it's a good partner for us uh, to do these kind of ventures and we're trying hard to support these companies with payment gateways with, with bank access uh, so even though we are still in testing stage and, uh, and and many of the things were not fully explored I would say after the two years we have a lo lot of experience of how liberal and business can be done uh, even though our recognition by other states is still limited and the great news, and I believe it's the first time I, I'm, I'm announcing it actually, is that the, the Liberland group has received a free trade zone status. It's only, it's only 10 kilometers away from Liberland. Uh, so in the Apatin free trade zone, uh, the Liberland companies can find their harbor. It is VAT free and it is import export tax free. And I think it's a great opportunity for many of the Liberland businesses to thrive inside of the Serbian jurisdiction yet under the umbrella of Liberland free trade zone. Uh, so if you think about producing something physical and exporting it or maybe repackaging something coming from East Europe to West Europe, this is a great place to do it. Or you can also start production of anything that you can think. Now we have three major investors. One of them wants to start producing car engines there. I hope that these things will happen over the course of next year. This is actually from the event last year when we visited the free trade zone and you can see the mayor of Apatin also holds the highest liberal and state award. Uh, so our relations with Serbia from very beginning were very good. Uh, I'm happy that they remain ex excellent and that uh, we are very always welcome if, if we are coming to Serbia and doing business there, be it the airport or the free zone or the boat project, which I will show you. Also, there is Liberal and Chamber of Commerce, which uh, gets together all Liberal and businesses. I think it's a great opportunity for Liberal and business owners to network. Uh, it's also a great opportunity, for, of course, for, for, for example, for these gate payment gateways and banking institutions to talk about how they can support Liberal and business. So if you have any kind of business, it would be great if you decided to join it. And we have this project. Uh, settling Liberland is hard now because Croatia systematically arrests anybody that wants to reach Liberland. It doesn't matter from which side. Uh, so it's a bit of a challenge to, to go and stay there. But despite of that, people actually go there. Sometimes they sleep one or two nights there, uh, despite the blockade, because they find their way through. I was there last week uh, just for a short visit, uh, but it's possible. And. Uh, we do welcome actually the blockade in one way uh, because it protects our territory and even protects it against Croatians, right? Uh, even Croatians have hard times accessing Liberland at this stage because uh, Croatia simply doesn't recognize Liberland as their territory and they're enforcing the border. Uh, even enforcing the border that comes from Croatia as well as the border that is on our Serbian side. So we decided to make this floating Liberland, which will be parked directly in front of Liberland with different types of houseboats and uh, this being a mothership which will be basically harbor for other small houseboats. And this is not just a project stage. The, the boat actually exists and it is, I would say, 95% finished now. Uh, so you will be able to come and visit. There will be small hotel, small casino. There will be a co-working space. Uh, we could do similar events like this there because there will be also some 150 seats available on the desk. There is a small restaurant. So it would be, I think, a great place for Liberlanders to get together. And since there is 600,000 of them, I have no doubt that it will be occupied throughout the year and it will be a great place for a meeting. And there is a really, okay, a couple more visualizations. This is the, the master suite. Uh, these are the cabins, how they will look like. This is the office space on the first deck. 
Those are some of the houseboats that you can also get if you would like to have a separate space. Right now it, there, it was redesigned by Italian architectural studio. And was, this is a smaller version of it. So that, now there are all these different possibilities, but this is the place where Liberland floating will be based, only 300 meters away from Liberland, on this beautiful sandy island with these sandy beaches. I think it's a great place to spend summer. Uh, last year I spent almost a month, this year at least two weeks, because it was quite busy summer, but it's a beautiful place to be in over the course of summer. And we are also planning to do Liberland Floating Man. We had the year zero this year with some 120 people coming. We, we didn't really have much more uh, accommodation capacity. Uh, but next year we are planning to have five to 600 people coming. Uh, so if you would like to see how the project is developing, then there is the 13th of August uh, 2020. The date has been set already for a major Liberland music festival with a lot of interesting people coming and lots of lectures. And this is the place actually from the other side. That's me and my wife. So it would be great uh, to have you on board and see you in Liberland at some point. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, thank you for your speech. It was fascinating. I would love to read the paper that you have with the details on it. But my question is, do you think that Serbia has a hidden agenda in giving you the territory that it did? And do you foresee in the future that they might try to take that territory back? I don't think so. Um, if you study the, the border dispute, like whoever basically gets this territory loses the border dispute. So for them, it's also a matter of like national interest not to have this territory. So there is this very interesting situation in which Croatia and the EU and the Germany has more diplomatic power. So they have more stronger force to, to enforce the border dispute according to their own vision. But it also entails the fact that Liberland will not be part of territory of Croatia. <laughs> so as strong as they are fighting uh, for land, the more they're serious about fighting for the land in this border dispute, the less they must claim Liberland. So it is for both sides, it's a matter of national interest not to claim it. Uh, so I, I would say that's one of the possible outcomes is that Croatia will win the border dispute. So the, the, the court will say this territory is Serbia. And for us, the main task is to become strong enough to be a real partner. And if there will be hundreds of millions of euro invested in the region already, if there will be a serious project how to develop Liberland and there will be serious physical presence of Liberlanders, it will be very hard for Serbia to kind of reclaim the, the place back and it would also be silly because they will already enjoy a lot of benefits from Liberland presence and they can just um, be excited of how much more can be actually done when we start developing the Liberland as it is. Uh, and my second question is do Ukrainians need a visa to come to Liverland? <laughs> I think, you know, the, the, with us, I would really like to have a, a very short process on visa on arrival. Uh, and, uh, and I think it would be easy, you know, everybody basically gets their passport checked and gets some nice stamp. But uh, I think that, that uh, open borders, that's a great idea. But also it's great to have a little bit of, of chance to check who is coming in and out of your territory, so it's a, it will, will probably take a couple of seconds and, and there will be micro-screening for everybody and everybody will get the visa on arrival. Thank you very much. Um, can you go back a little bit and explain how this, I guess, the border dispute arose and how you got the land and all that? Um, just a little bit more information on that. And then further, what borders do you, or what border checks do you expect and will be just with Croatia or in both sides, it's Croatia and uh, Serbia? We're definitely not going to be part of EU and Schengen, that's for sure. And the uh, European Commission has actually acknowledged that, that Liberland is not part of EU and not part of Schengen. And when you go from Liberland, from Croatia to Liberland, you're actually charged for illegal border crossing outside of Schengen zone, which is a very nice confirmation of the fact that Liberland is not part of, of Croatia. So um, let me get back to, the, to the, the, the way that this territory was created in the first place. Uh, the, 
during the times when Yugoslavia was basically one country, the, the river was, was straightened, right? So there was a huge development project to make the, the way shorter. And it was meandering a lot. And uh, the cadastre maps, as well as the original borders between the two countries, were accord in line in the original road where the uh, original line where the river was going. And after Yugoslavia separated, from very beginning both countries insisted on different version of the border. Serbia wanted the new path, the new straightened path, and Croatia, because they would gain some extra land, insisted on the old version of the border. So the cadastre maps and all the registries were stuck with Serbia and Serbia deleted everything some 10 years ago from their cadastral maps and actually bought all the private land from this particular territory before, before deleting it. And, uh, and Croatia has never put it into their cadastral maps and insisting this piece of land belongs to Serbia in order to push for this version, for their version of the border. Um, so I, I hope I, I clarified it a little bit, but uh, I think even this, this Chicago Journal of International Law uh, is, is a very good source for this particular topic. I think there is like five pages just about that. And, uh, and I advise you to read it. It's a nice reading by independent uh, lawyer. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I have heard uh, there was some idea, uh, maybe, uh, it's most, uh, it was a dream, uh, to make a state uh, Liberland railway. So, uh, as I traced uh, via the map uh, on Serbia, uh, Epetin, as free economic zone, has a railway station and a railway line. Have you thought about uh, to use this station as official railway, uh, Liberland railway station? And and is it possible to organize passenger traffic there and to cargo traffic to use this zone for, uh, for Liberland's sake? Well, thank you very much for that question. And by the way, this is Denis, our, our representative also here in Ukraine, who is doing a great job on spreading the news. Uh, I think almost every two weeks or so, there is a news about Liberland in, in Ukrainian uh, on YouTube. Uh, so if, if you would like to help with that, that would be great to, to put the Liberland media a bit together because now it's scattered somebody different people are doing different things but it would be great to to put the people together so that energy is safe and second of all I actually came with Ukraine with one uh, project which I was which I was pushed to do by the Liberland Railway. Uh, there is already a company called Liberland Railways. Uh, it, it has done uh, many different things, a part of making a festival inside of a train in Czech Republic. But their business plan is now to offer a, a connection between Ukraine and Czech Republic because they see a big opportunity for it. And I was asked to actually contact specific people within the Ukrainian administration uh, to make it happen. So it's funny enough, funnily enough, you know, independently of, of importance of connecting Liberland itself to, to the railway network, we have this project which would connect Ukraine and Czech Republic with a regular ra railway connection uh, that is organized by, by the CEO of Liberland uh, Railways. That's one thing. Uh, so if you wanted to help with that, that's one of the business projects that, that uh, is in development. The other thing is the railway directly to Liberland. Yes, part of the development of the free trade zone is also getting the rails directly to Apatin free trade zone. It's not there yet. Uh, so right now in Apatin, the Serbian government is actually developing a hard uh, for cargo uh, that should happen in next two years let's see how that goes and uh, another part is that they want to bring a regular ne railway network which would also be quite helpful for any heavy heavy things but uh, right now Apatin is like kind of in the middle of Danube uh, very close it takes a couple days to get to Istanbul and then to ship everything to the international network of, of container traffic and it also takes a couple days to go all the way to Germany so I think it is it is a very strategic place for for even heavy cargo develop, uh, development or uh, so it's a good question. Uh, I, I hope that uh, the Liberland Railway, well, also fully privatized uh, venture, will take off soon.
Yeah, maybe it, it will be some brand uh, starts uh, from Appetin, uh, some brand of uh, label and railway. Uh, I think uh, it's very good uh, if uh, to form this uh, this brand, like Liber Bill, for example. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> and I'd be happy if you if you helped a little bit with with this particular project because I know that these people are serious. They are actually already established in the railway network. They've got the contacts with the tycoons in Czech Republic. They know how to rent a train and if. They they think that running a regular line between Czech Republic and Ukraine could be a, a feasible business, which I understand today there is none, then, then it's, it should be something that, that you know, maybe the liberal and business community in Ukraine could, could take a look, look at. Anyway, okay. thank, you. thank you very much again. I hope you will join us for the after party.